Hey guys, it's White Maga here, back at it again with a new character design video, and today we're going to be using Sano, the lead character from my original series, Apple Black. Except this time we're going to be focusing less on Sano's overall look, and instead focusing on his accessories, and in this case, weapon of choice, to be more specific, his wand. Not that wand. Get your head out of the gutter. Now I know what some of you are thinking, right? Hey, what? Isn't a Rotus Sano's wand? Not exactly. I've kind of hinted in the series here and there that a Rotus is actually not a wand, but I will allow the comic do the full explanation rather than me blabbing on video. But here we're going to go over my thought process when designing the actual wand and overall the importance of picking the right weapon of choice for your main character and how you're picking something that's not just, oh, cool, you want to pick something that actually fits the character. You want it to maybe be something unique, something that fits your nature, it might be symbolic in some way, something that you can justify when asked, oh, why did you pick this choice of weapon for your character? You know, something memorable, something strong. Cool is, cool doesn't hurt, but something that just, you know, fits. So it is part of the character design and less so about his attire because you guys have kind of seen me evolve over time with his attire and I think currently I'm the happiest I've ever been with Sano's overall look. Whether it be him as a silhouette, whether it be the color choices, some of the symbols on him, the list goes on, especially now versus when we started this whole shebang. Now for those new to the channel, you might not know what I'm talking about, especially when I'm talking about wands. I don't mean wands in the traditional sense of what you would see in a series like, I don't know, Harry Potter. I kind of have to define what wand means, especially for the newcomers to the channel. Wands are just these powerful items that help amplify or enhance spells casted by sorcerers in the world of Apple Black. A simple example would be if Cyclops was in my world, his eye thingy would be his wand because it helps him regulate, control, whatever the blast from his eyes. You have sorcerers in my world that maybe have smoke powers and they have cigarettes as wands. You have wands that are boxing gloves, knuckles, swords, sticks, staffs, belts. It could really be any item and it kind of allows me to do some creative things and have creative weapons within the world. Not everybody has a wand. Some people are just too cool for school. It's kind of tradition at this point where anytime I talk about wands, I kind of ask the audience, you guys watching, to leave an idea of what you think your wand would be if you were in my world. And no, a wand cannot be a body part. Get your head out of the gutter. In the last video where I talked about wands with my other character, Obi, and his wand, Shango Chuku, I always like to have the wands be like a simple item, at least in its initial form, and then it could evolve to be something else, where with Obi's wand, it can kind of turn into some kind of spinning blade slash yo-yo, but initially it's a yo-yo. At, at its core, it's a yo-yo. I always like to start there. Like it's a yo-yo before it becomes, I don't know, a, a shuriken on a string. And in that video, someone left a comment. Here's an example. My wand would be a sports watch and it would allow me to slow down time around me by slowing the pointers. The setback, and I'm guessing the weakness, would be that the watch corrects itself after use and slows me down until it's correct. Which, I like this. I like this a lot. You put a weakness in there, I like it. And another reason I like it is because there's a character in Apple Black that has something similar, not a sports watch, but a pocket watch. And one of the cool things with how I do it in my series, again, the simplicity of it, it starts off as just a pocket watch. But later, it can evolve to something else where you see the hands in the pocket watch, say the minute hand, the second hand, and the hour hand, he can take out each and they turn into some kind of blade he can use as a weapon, but it's not just cutting stuff. It kind of plays with time. So maybe a slice with the hour hand does something different that's tied to hours. Same thing with the seconds, and same thing with uh, the minute hand. So maybe the hour hand is probably the most powerful one or something like that. And I'm still working that, but you can kind of see how my brain is working, how all the inner workings, <laughs> clockwork of how I'm putting all the pieces together. Which is one of the really cool things I like about the concept and the, the way I've taken wands from just a typical stick you would see in Harry Potter. Wands have names, you can call wands to activate them and all that cool stuff. So share your creativity in the comments. I always love to read them. The wands always complement powers that the sorcerer already has, but it just enhances them or amplifies them in some way. So with Sano, there will be a point in the series, again, I don't want to spoil too much, I kind of want the book to 
reveal most of it. But just know there will be a point where it wouldn't be a good idea to use Erotus. And so he would need another way to battle besides just teleporting. That's what he does. He teleports. There's been a lot of characters that teleport in media or geek culture and overall Nightcrawl. The list goes on. Even in anime, you have like a, a couple people in Naruto. But I think the character that comes the closest to teleporting the way I would imagine Sano does it would be Nataru from Birdie the Mighty. Sano's teleportation is very similar to Nataru's, but there's certain limitations I put on Sano's teleportation that you can view as a weakness that maybe he'll have to overcome over time, but it's also something that could be viewed as strategic. Maybe he teleports in a pattern. Maybe he teleports in a pattern that can easily be identified or analyzed by a trained eye in battle. Little tweaks like that keep things interesting. Sano also teleports in intervals, so he can't just keep teleporting continuously forever. There are certain minutes and times where he literally cannot teleport in that moment, at least in his current state. The list goes on. I kind of go over it in the series. So Erotus, which is like this powerful arm he has, is like an extra thing, right? It's not necessarily his wand. It doesn't allow him to teleport. Sano already comes from a long line of people who teleport. The arm just allows him to do certain energy-based spells, but the arm is also its own thing that I want the book to completely reveal. Like it's the arm of a god. It's a different thing. Can come off as a wand. I have that mystery in the series on purpose, but it's less Sano's wand and more Sano is its wand. <laughs> I'm saying all of this to kind of let you know that in order for me to pick a wand, you need to know the base of the character. So for your own characters, before you pick a weapon, you kind of need to know your character and what would fit. Now this is more of like a power based thing. We still don't have a good grasp of what Sano's wand will actually be. And that sometimes can not only be derived from Sano's character, it could be derived from the story itself. Very early on, I, you know, I didn't think much about all these things and I toyed around with the idea of, oh, maybe Sano's, Sano's wand would be like a sword. Because typically for main characters, that's what it ends up being anyways, but I wanted something more original, more unique, and less common, because we see that a lot. There's nothing wrong with it, especially if it makes sense. I'm not afraid of doing something just because a bunch of other people do it, uh, and I don't, I now don't want to do it because other people have done it, even though it makes sense. That you know, you're trying to force the originality. It doesn't work that way. But here I knew a straight up sword just didn't work. It just wouldn't make sense or just wouldn't fit Santa as well as I wanted. I did want something very unique because of certain elements of the story that I can't say in this video. I wanted Sano to use his father's wand. Somewhat of a trope, somewhat of something you'd see in other series as well. But again, I'm not afraid of doing things if it makes sense, if it works, right? That's why you see it that often because it's something that makes sense. It makes sense for you to use a family weapon, right? You see it in Game of Thrones, you see it in all sorts of series because it makes sense. It doesn't feel forced. It would feel forced to have the one be there and not be used just for the sake of, oh, other series do it. I'm not saying you always have to go down that path, but there's certain things and elements within my series, Apple Black, that the mere fact that Santa was using his father's wand, or at least will eventually use his father's wand, is also foreshadowing something else in a subtle way. So there are other reasons that I've chosen to go down this path, and those are the kind of things you need to think about. So I'm not saying you absolutely use it, use like family pass down type weapons every time. I'm just saying you have to thoroughly think about everything. And I did, and I did consider other items or other ways of going about it. And I think this is the best one, knowing what I know. And once I went down that path, it was easy for me to actually pick a wand for Sano's father than, you know, Sano straight up, even though it kind of works together. I, I, I can't explain too much without giving away too much. So I picked a brush. I foreshadowed things already about Sano's father being a writer. So a brush to me made sense and specifically a brush, not a pen or pencil or blah, 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 blah. And how the wand would be used it's not gonna be like, you know, you, you write down words and the words come to life or you draw something like Sai and Art, no. Again, the wand is to complement what the sorcerer can already do. So how do I take a wand and then take their abilities of teleportation and do something interesting? How do I make that brush wand look cool, look like a weapon? Those were the interesting challenges that I faced, which were fun to break down. So my brain broke it down like this. It's a brush, it needs to look cool, it needs to look unique, it needs ink as well, 
how would you use that ink in battle tied to these teleportation powers, at least teleportation at their core. So I toyed around with the idea of maybe swinging the brush and having the ink splash and maybe doing something with the ink once it touches, right? Almost like a blast, but doesn't work exactly like a blast. In this instance, the ink would be teleporting away whatever it touches, which I think was the most interesting part. It's not just like this laser beam or blast or you know acid. It literally teleports those parts and then puts it somewhere else. So it's not like destroying what it touches. It is to a degree, but it's taking those parts and teleporting them elsewhere. Where? Question mark. I did a little more research on designs and you know cool designs of you know how I'd want it to look, and I did some sketches, and then I found Splatoon. I had no idea what Splatoon is. I still don't. I know I'd heard about it before. That's why I knew what to search, right? But I I never fully knew what it was. But once I pulled it up, it gave me some pretty cool ideas for designs. I also knew I wanted the wand to start as an actual brush, right? Nothing too big, just a very recognizable, handy brush. Like not a tiny brush, something you can hold with your whole fist, but nothing too huge. But then it could, again, evolve to be something bigger and can do even cooler stuff with. I liked some of the elements of the design of the new Rebellion in the DMC Devil May Cry games. I liked that idea of it being able to change shape and bend and be a little curvy and maybe stretch and have the end where the actual brush would hit and do some cool teleportation stuff with that. I wanted the actual brush end to not feel like a regular brush end. I wanted it to feel like white, bluish flames. And then the impulse, which is kind of like the chakra or riatsu or whatever in my world, passed from the sorcerer into the wand, then you're releasing these white ink that then does all that other cool stuff. Another thing that this reminded me of was another character from Dark and Black actually called Wei and how he worked was his blood would actually explode anytime he snaps his fingers. So he would have, he would cut himself and have the blood splash on whatever he wanted and then snap his fingers and then boom. So that's how I was kind of thinking about this, but instead of the blood exploding or the ink in this case exploding, it's literally teleporting those parts away, which you can also do really interesting stuff with. Imagine the Ochoko v Bakugo fight, right? Everyone loves that fight, right? All right, let me take that fight, but switch a couple things around. Imagine Sano with the wand fighting some really fast opponent that's really strong, has a, has a trained eye, can predict Sano's movements, where he's gonna be, where he's gonna teleport to, can't hit him with the ink, all of that stuff. But then Sano starts trying, they're battling in some kind of ruin and hitting a lot of stones, and then, you know, once the ink hits, in this case, I wanted, to, I wanted to do something where the wand would have almost like a trigger at the hilt, and anytime you pull the trigger, that's when the ink would teleport away whatever it touches. And so Santa would swing, 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 it would hit, and you know, you'll never hit him, but he's been hitting rocks, right? Kind of like Ochoko was doing. Imagine teleporting all the rocks to the top, but again, here he's teleporting them, so he he has more control over where the rocks are actually going. So imagine this villain guy or the opponent, whoever it is, you know, starts to get cocky because Sano is predictable. He's, he then he then switches tactics to make the other guy predictable by having the rocks start to drop because you know you teleport them really way high up, so they've been falling for a while, but now they're strategically placed and they're falling exactly where Sano wants them, and then. That makes the opponent start to dodge in a very predictable way because of how Sano has placed those rocks that are now falling. Now Sano knows exactly where that guy's going to be, oh girl, and then uses that to get the upper hand. Predictably, you know, the whole time they were thinking, oh man, the rocks are never gonna hit me, but then they dodge into like a trap where Sano's already waiting for them, it's already teleported there waiting for them, and you know, hits him with a some kind of move, I don't know. It's the first idea that came to mind, but stuff like that, you can kind of come up with some really cool scenario, really tactical battles and have it be really interesting, which is one of the cool things we like about these kind of battles. Like you rarely see stuff like this in Western comics. You do see it. I do think uh, Spider-Man is a good example of that, but we mostly see stuff like this in Shonen series.
So Sano, in my example, like Ochako in the battle with Bakugo, uses the rocks falling, and I'm just, again, giving an example, where she was trying to distract Bakugo and then touch him. Sano, in my example, is using the rocks to make the opponent more predictable in their movement, trying to control the situation and be smarter about his abilities to one-up whoever this person is. So as you guys have seen, I'm not afraid of doing things that could be seen as tropes or anything like that. It's more about the execution. There is originality in execution. Another example of that with the wand, especially once it's been called, and the wand is going to be called Salmander, name subject to change. Wands in Apple Black are inspired by obviously the original idea of what a wand is in like a Harry Potter or any witch and wizard type fiction. But also Innocence from The Grey Man, Weapons from Soul Eater, Zanpakuto's from Bleach, and things like that. And I can also see Salmander in his full form be turned into like a broomstick, a pseudo broomstick. It's still a brush at its core, but at the end of the day, brushes, broomsticks, mop sticks, they're kind of similar to a degree. And in this case, it'll also be a nod to witches and wizards and flying broomsticks and things like that. So this will be something he can ride. And the way maybe I'll be able to justify it since he can teleport. I mean, if he can teleport, why would you travel this way? And you can justify it by saying that it uses less energy, it uses less impulse. Again, you don't want to overpower your characters to where they use your powers willy-nilly every time they can. There are times where you have to conserve energy. And this will be a way to do that. And then the trigger thing at the end where he can hold it and it can almost be like a tuning to rev up or accelerate while riding Sawman or kind of like a flying broomstick. I've also toyed around with the idea of what would happen if you know you have like an extra evolved version of Sawman and other things it could turn into. I played around with the idea of a gun of some sort and the idea of almost like a lightsaber or ink saber or ink lightsaber, you know what I mean. But at the same time, I don't want to diminish it too much and take it so far away from being a brush at its core. So I can see this being done as something where maybe he uses his Arotus arm to hold Salmander. So maybe anytime he holds Salmander with Arotus, Arotus being as powerful as it is, it doesn't matter what it's holding. It can turn it into whatever it wants or it can play around with the whole fabric of the wand. And this kind of helps sell the idea that Arotus is that strong. Even though the whole idea is not to use a Rotus, but I can imagine like just imagine a cool, dire scenario where maybe for the first time he holds the wand with a Rotus and we see all sorts of cool things that happen. All to not diminish maybe other wands and other sorcerer who have guns kind of as a wand or some kind of sword as a wand. But at the end of the day, regardless, right, you have other sorcerers who maybe might have the same wand at the, at the, at the core, a gun and a gun, but maybe the blast or the bullets do different things. It's all about the execution. So here, you'd be shooting with a gun or the lightsaber. What's happening is, you know, anything the ink hits, again, it's still teleportation. It's still teleporting those things away. Anything you slice, it's not actually slicing through or like a lightsaber, it's not actually burning anything. It's literally teleporting anything it touches to a different place. Where? Question mark. Playing around with all those ideas, and I believe that, you know, iteration is key, trying out different designs, and just having fun with all this stuff. And now I feel like we've come up with a wand that's unique, it's different, you're not gonna see it anywhere else, and it does its own unique things, and it's more in line with Sano and where he's from and it's more in tune with the story. It comes into play much more. It foreshadows a whole host of things. So I say all the stuff I said up until this point to have you guys thinking in, a, in the same or a similar direction when making certain decisions for your character. Not just for maybe weapons, but any accessories, anything symbolic that they wear. Maybe it's a nod to something else. Maybe it's foreshadowing something else. But sometimes it's always good and fun to think thoroughly about the decisions you're making within your character's design, whether it be for the attire or accessories like their weapon. The bummer, of course, is that we're not gonna see Salmander <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I still have to finish volume three. Trust me, I'm working on it. And probably won't see it in volume four either. I think it's in volume five. The good news is that I have still been writing, even though I'm creating all this content, I'm done remastering volume one and two. I've still been writing ahead. So I kind of have a very clear idea of where I'm going with the series from start to finish. But 
the closer I get to making stuff, the more defined all these ideas are in my head. I know what happens in volume four in more detail than I know what happens in volume five, if that makes sense. But at the end of the day, I know all the key things that happen throughout the whole series. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different from the traditional character design video you're used to seeing, but I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So please don't forget to like United States to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell, hit all notifications to stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. A lot of tutorials coming, a lot of fun videos coming, our challenges, the list goes on. You guys can let me know what you think about Sano's wand. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, most of these are just drafts or subject to change until it actually debuts in the comic. So I might change my mind or tweak certain things. It's only set in stone once we see it inside the book. And we're definitely not going to be seeing the Tenno's Wand in Volume 3, so I have time. Apple Black Volume 3 is on the way. A lot of people have been hitting me up for it. I appreciate that everybody is kind of gung-ho about it. You will never know how gung-ho I am for it. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, hell, TikTok. It's all linked in the description. Anything you could possibly need, including where you can read the first free chapter of Apple Black and more. My other series, Bukasi, published and serialized inside the AEM. You can check out our mobile app. It's free, along with a starter's guide in there that kind of explains what we do. All our magazines, all our Shonen Sanin magazines, we're the world's most diverse manga anthology. Saturday Wars, Infinity War type crossover event with all our series. That's also coming. Linked in the description. Get two free months of Skillshare. Also linked. You're welcome. So I'm manga, and I'm out!